Ninja Gaiden. Hey! So Legendary Ninja, an occasional fighting game tournament entrant Ryu Hayabusa, is back on the scene thanks to Koei Tecmo's Ninja Gaiden Master Collection, dropping on every major current gen console from the modest Nintendo Switch all the way to the Goliath that is the PlayStation 5. Originally designed by Team Ninja, known for their extensive back catalogue of action and fighting games like Dead or Alive and Neo, Ninja Gaiden has held a firm footing as a franchise that equally draws both excitement and ire mainly for its adrenaline pumping combat and crushing difficulty respectively. Its fast and frenetic pace perfectly encapsulates the swift strikes and acrobatic prowess synonymous with Ninja. But does the Master Collection keep up with the rest of the clan? Let's find out. Ninja Gaiden Master Collection is a compilation of the modern Ninja Gaiden reboot trilogy running at the best possible resolution and performance with the additional power provided by current generation platforms. The collection consists of the updated ports of Ninja Gaiden Sigma, Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2, and Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge that were originally released between the mid-2000s all the way to the early 2010s. Now using the latest versions of these Ninja Gaiden games to represent the Master Collection may appear to be the most logical thing to do as a developer and publisher, but the difference between these versions are more complex than what's initially advertised. I won't get too far into it, but explaining the nuances of the Ninja Gaiden versions almost warrants its own analysis video, but in the interest of time, we'll keep things brief on this review and focus on the important points, starting with the first game in the series. Ninja Gaiden Sigma is a port of the first game that originally released on the Xbox, and chronicles Ryu Hayabusa's quest for vengeance after his village and clan are attacked. This is the game where the foundations of the series are established on a mechanical level and gradually piles the pressure on as you get familiar with the flow of combat and platforming. Sigma sports a sizable story mode with added chapters exclusive to Sigma where you can play as fiend hunter Rachel, who you might recognize alongside Ryu in the Dead or Alive games. As part of Sigma's changes, some areas in this game have received a complete makeover and had areas added or tweaked to account for extra boss battles and combat sections that weren't in the original game. There are a few nifty quality of life changes, like using recovery items via a quick access menu found at the bottom left hand corner of the user interface, so you don't need to pause the game if you need to top your health up in the middle of a fight, as well as being able to use ranged weapons without the need to use the game's clunky first person perspective. Now, if you've played Sigma before and you know what you're getting yourself into, everything has remained intact, so if you're worried that anything is missing, Rest assured that Ninja Trials, Survival Mode, Decapitation, and the hilarious hidden Ninja Dog difficulty are all still here. Visually, Sigma finally runs at a resolution above 720p and looks pretty great despite the occasional low-res environmental texture. Though at this point, the OG Ninja Gaiden is almost 17 years old, so given the circumstances, it's aged quite well on the visual front. As for the gameplay, I personally feel that this is still an incredible game. Even if Ninja Gaiden Black, the version preceding Sigma, is arguably the better rehash of the original game. It's my definite pick of the collection as it features a good mix of exploration and combat which never outstays its welcome despite its unyielding demeanour. Now, on to the next one. This one's a bit more of a divisive call, but Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 marks the next game in the Master Collection. As the name would suggest, Sigma 2 follows the events of the first Sigma and is a rearrangement of Ninja Gaiden 2 that initially released on the Xbox 360. This one follows Ryu again as he chases a gang of greater fiends and members of the Black Spider Ninja Clan as they attempt to turn Earth into a realm ruled by demons. The original release of Ninja Gaiden 2 was a far more bombastic, violent and linear affair compared to the first game where Ryu can dismember enemies and cut through a significantly higher body count on screen at the one time. This design shift is accentuated through kinetic and swift combat mechanics like the obliteration technique, which grants iframes and shows a flashy violent finish on wounded enemies that add to the foundations of existing techniques derived from the original game. While this game places a heavier focus on combat rather than adventure, it doesn't pull any punches or waste any of its real estate, to the point where the original release on Xbox 360 had to run at a sub-720p resolution and was subject to areas of the game where the frame rate would tank completely due to the sheer amount of enemies, particle effects and body parts on screen at once. For Sigma 2, Team Ninja made a few technical amendments to allow the game to run better than its predecessor on the Xbox 360, 
Though these changes were the subject of controversy as this meant removing key components of the original game, such as the excessive gore and dismemberment. In addition, the enemy encounters were altered drastically in several areas of the game, to the point where some enemy types were swapped or omitted from the game entirely, resulting in leaving large empty gaps in corridors that would otherwise be filled with exhilarating fights. Overall, the number of combat encounters in Sigma 2 pales in comparison to the original game, and the enemy health gauges were disproportionately increased to address this, ultimately to ensure there were no performance issues like the Xbox 360 release. To make matters worse, the patented Ninja Gaiden scoring system known as Karma allows players to reward themselves with weapon upgrades, ninpo, and new abilities the better they score by taking less damage, killing enemies in rapid succession, and so on. The unfortunate case with Sigma 2 is that Karma is largely only used for buying recovery items where weapon upgrades that would originally need Karma to upgrade are now handed to the player for free in a staggered fashion as they progress throughout the game. This tends to cause a difficulty imbalance and trivializes the incentive to score as high as possible or choose between crucial items as there's enough karma to go around to buy everything at any time. Now there's a lot more to this case, but these are the main pain points generally discussed by fans of the series, arguing that Sigma 2 feels too harsh of a deviation from the original game's vision, with said changes being a little too militant and in turn making the game a lot easier than what it was designed to be. While not much has been done to address these contentious changes, Sigma 2 seems to follow suit in the visual department by offering the same level of dismemberment featured in the original release of Sigma 2, with purple particle effects masking delimbed enemies and a lack of excessive gore, suggesting that the build used for the Master Collection was that of the PlayStation 3. Depending on who you are, that's a bit of an issue if you prefer the original Xbox 360 release of Ninja Gaiden 2, but if you're not too fussed about ultraviolence, you'll still find a great action game here. It's not the best version of Ninja Gaiden 2, nor does it reach the heights of the first Ninja Gaiden game, but I don't really mind Sigma 2, especially on the harder difficulty settings. At lucky last, we come to Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge, a vastly improved port of Ninja Gaiden 3 that originally released on the Wii U. If you never got around to playing the first release of Ninja Gaiden 3, that's great, and you should definitely keep it that way, since Razor's Edge better represents the original vision of Team Ninja's previous efforts. For instance, Gore is back on the menu, additional weapons are available from the get-go, and major mechanical changes were made to prevent exploiting oversights in combat design that had once made the game a total cakewalk to complete. Specifically, mechanics like charging essence to help charge ultimate techniques is omitted entirely and is charged automatically once enough enemies are attacked. A new counter ability called Steel on Bone is tweaked to prevent infinite chaining, and enemies are far more aggressive than they were before. Other changes include the return of the Karma scoring system, Ninpo being manually controllable rather than just a static cutscene, and abilities that can be upgraded on the fly using Karma acquired through combat. Ultimately, these tweaks helped bring the game back closer to what Ninja Gaiden 3 should have been in the first place. Now, I'm going to be completely honest here, but despite these major positive changes, I'm still not the biggest fan of Ninja Gaiden 3. Now, don't get it twisted. It's still a solid action game, but it's not the best Ninja Gaiden game you can get your hands on. A lot of the battle design centers around fighting in large, sparse battlefield environments with next to no personality and little opportunity to use your surroundings as an agile ninja to your advantage. In most cases, after you defeat a wave of enemies, you're tasked with running down a corridor or completing a quick time event, then repeating the process again for about 15 hours. Seeing the game area always lead to a huge open square-shaped area to fight in is the equivalent of seeing a large amount of chest-high cover in a shooter. It's a very easy tell that the game does very little to mask what's coming up and becomes really easy to point out combat sections from miles away. At least in Ninja Gaiden 2, enemy placement has a bit more thought put into it and you can be ambushed and attacked discreetly at any corner, though with Ninja Gaiden 3, there was no such consideration. The game has a clear directive to follow and unlike the other Ninja Gaiden games, leaves very little room for experimentation or personalised approach. For example, I generally try to challenge myself without using Ninpo, though with no curative items available in Ninja Gaiden 3, the most efficient way to recover health is to force yourself into using limited crowd clearing attacks, i.e. Ninpo, or using your key meter to regenerate instead. The real icing on the cake is that almost every encounter features several soldiers shooting projectiles and explosives at you, 
generally demanding the player to adopt the same attack plan every time of killing them first above all other enemies, adding more to the monotony. I'd feel the game would be so much better off if these enemy types were cut or used a lot less, as Sigma 2 had the pleasure of doing to some of its enemy types. Safe to say that after beating Razor's Edge, I never want to see a soldier holding a rocket launcher in a video game ever again. That said, Steel on Bone is one of my favourite mechanics in the series and makes you feel like a total badass once you figure out how to properly pull it off while everyone is coming at you at once. Paradoxically, a small percentage of boss fights in Razor's Edge are far better at evaluating the player's learned skills than some of the fights in Sigma and Sigma 2. So while it's not particularly the best game in the collection, Razor's Edge has a few tiny pockets where it shines. Should you decide to play through the entire game to see those moments is entirely up to your discretion. Now while this might be some dangerous wishful thinking on my behalf, one missed opportunity with the Master Collection was to add extra versions of the Ninja Gaiden games such as the vanilla version of Ninja Gaiden 2 and Ninja Gaiden Black for comparative purposes. Consolidating every single available version would have been a great compromise considering the lack of online content within the Master Collection. Specifically, Sigma 2's tag missions are local co-op only, while Ninja Gaiden 3's Ninja Trials are solo only, and the PvP multiplayer mode was removed entirely. This result leaves it quite the bare-bones proposition, and the versions on offer resemble simple up ports and nothing more, which might provide little reason for existing fans to revisit these games via the Master Collection. But then the reasoning behind why the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection is the way it is eventually clicked for me. From the decision to use the Sigma versions of the first two Ninja Gaiden games and keeping a razor sharp fixation on the single player components, this compilation seems like it best suits newcomers to Ninja Gaiden looking to test the waters with an offering that's a bit more palatable and user friendly. As for a verdict, the games are just fine. But the Master Collection is far from what I'd consider to be the definitive edition. If you're an Xbox owner or a longtime purist of Ninja Gaiden, I'd advise to stick with the Holy Trinity that is Ninja Gaiden Black, Vanilla Ninja Gaiden 2, and Razor's Edge as they're all backwards compatible, available on the Xbox Digital Store, and significantly enhanced on the Xbox platform. However, if your only platform of choice is a Nintendo Switch, Sony PlayStation, or a PC, and you've never played a Ninja Gaiden game before, it's fine for what it is. Start with these versions, then if you vibe with the frenetic combat and want to seek a bigger challenge, look to the Xbox One or Series X for your definitive Master Ninja experience.